Hello and welcome to Dunstan Kiwi Breed, your weekly look at the New Zealand thoroughbred breeding industry. I'm Aidan Rodley and coming up on this week's show, we're at Kevin and Joanne Hickman's Villa Archie Downs to discuss the growth of the farm and we take a look at the pedigree of dual group one Australian performer Kermadec. But right now we pay tribute to a stallion that was pivotal in shaping the New Zealand breeding industry. Sir Patrick Hogan reflects on the career of champion stallion Zabil and the legacy he has left behind. There may never be another one like him. New Zealand's greatest stallion, Zabil, died at Sir Patrick Hogan's Cambridge stud last month, bringing the curtain down on a career that will reverberate in breeding and racing circles perpetually. The son of Cambridge stud stallion great Sir Tristram, Zabil left a legacy of champion performers, the ilk of might and power, octagonal and vengeance of rain. Octagonal! Octagonal wins the guineas! And a haul of 27 stallion awards that included 15 Dua Stallion trophies, a record that is never likely to be matched. In fairness, um, Sabil has definitely emulated his own sire if you look at the record and, the, um, and, and look at it on, on the page. Um, with his Group 1 winners, he's one behind uh, of individual winners at 44, but uh, what those 44 horses have won have well and truly emulated what the 45 of Sir Tristram did on the racetrack. And I don't want to take anything away from Sir Tristram because without him, there'd have never been a Sabeel. But that's just looking at the facts of the, uh, of the matter. I mean, um, to get one great sire like Sir Tristram and to think uh, his son uh, would come along, stand at stud and actually emulate him, I don't think anybody, not even myself, would have picked that that could happen. It was probably uh, an impossibility. Um, you know, and people, including myself, would have said when Sabeel went to stud, uh, if you thought about it, you'd say it won't happen. I mean, it can't happen, can't happen again. So, but it did. Bred by English business and bloodstock tycoon Robert Sankster's Sweatenham stud and fold at Cambridge stud, Zabil sold as a yearling for $650,000 and raced in the colours of Dubai's Sheikh Hamdan bin Rashida Al Maktoum under leading Australian trainer Colin Hayes, winning the Group 1 Australian Guineas before Sir Patrick secured him for stud duties. He was conceived here and then he went off uh, to the yearling sales and then uh, purchased for Australia and raced and then ended up back on Cambridge stud. So uh, he was a magnificent, always a magnificent looking horse, yearling. Uh, entire the lot um, and um, I was always attracted towards him because of not only how he was bred but the look the horse had himself especially the head and eye it was just uh, I haven't had a horse that I've seen that had that head and that magnificent eye and you see that in his stock a lot at the races that big bright bold eye so uh, it stands out um, but look um, I don't pinch myself I don't do any things like that but I just seem to think well um, you know, I was the one chosen to look after two great horses and one followed the other and uh, it was quite amazing and uh, that that would happen. I mean, the odds of uh, striking that would be absolutely huge. Zabil was an instant hit at stud and became a reliable source of Group 1 winners with 10-time Group 1 winner Octagonal among his first foal crop. I think Martin Powell was by far the best horse he left. Uh, where he would have ended up potentially if he hadn't ended up unsound. I think in saying that, it's a bit unfair to Octagonal, who never ha had an unsoundness and won so many Group 1 races, um, won them in the opposite fashion to Might and Power from the back of the pack and continually got up in the last stride to win um, top Group 1 racing. Might and Power, of course, as we all know, was a front runner and in those three big races that he won um, for the Spring Carnival in Melbourne. I mean, it was just scintillating. It was unbelievable, it was exciting, and uh, the horse could have gone round once more again. Um, so yes, I'm putting Might and Power on top, but um, I have to have Octagonal as a very, very close second. In fact, if you sum them up, they should be equal to one another. Zabil's progeny have made a habit of shining especially brightly at the Melbourne Spring Carnival, claiming four Cox Plate wins and three Melbourne Cup triumphs for their famous dad. That was something that Zabil was able to do when it came to uh, the, the group carnivals, group one carnivals, and uh, especially in Sydney and, uh, and Melbourne, uh, the, uh, the Zabil stepped up every year, year after year, year after year. There was always two or three or one there 
popping up doing the business and uh, that was amazing. Zabir was out of French bred Lurie of Mere Lady Giselle, blood which Sir Patrick believes provided the speed in his progeny. I always said the, um, with his pedigree, the sharpness, the turn of foot, uh, came from um, the female line in, uh, through Nureyev. Uh, that's where that good, fast turn of foot came from. And of course the staying power came from the side of uh, Sir Tristram, through the Sir Tristram to uh, Sabeel. And it just ended up a magnificent mix, uh, especially when it came to uh, racing on the racetracks of Australia. I think Sabeel uh, has done a magnificent job for what he's done that he's had to compete against all shuttle stallions. I mean, Dali, Coolmore, Arrowfield. We know the last uh, 15, 20 years, the best stallions and best blood around the world has come to this part of the world to stand at stud. And yet Sabeel, fold in New Zealand, bred in New Zealand, was able to stand up. And we still talk about pedigrees, um, you know, and winners, and um, we still talk about Sir Tristram coming up in them. Well, I think Sir Tristram would be 40, 42, 43, 44 years old. That'll happen now with, um, with um, Zabil. They'll still, he'll, they'll still be around um, in the uh, generations not too far back, first, second, third generations for the next 20 years. They'll still be there. Zabil was always a dominant force in the sales ring, with Don Eduardo selling for a record $3.6 million in 2000. That cult going on to win the Group 1 Australian Derby and to a stud career. Among others, Zabil's sons retired to start at Octagonal, Reset, Z, St. Reims, and perhaps the stallion looking most likely to carry the torch for the sire line, Cox Plate winner Savabil. He is proving a mighty broodmare sire too, with his daughters producing the likes of Darcy Brahma, Dundeal, Ocean Park, Atlantic Jewel, Samantha Miss, and Silent Achiever. Zabil overcame a bout of laminitis in 2012 before he was retired from stud duties the following year. His death, some 30 months later, made headlines around the world. Yeah, it was pretty devastating. I came to work at 6 o'clock in the morning, Saturday morning, and because the boys said uh, where, what had happened, so uh, I walked across the paddock. It was pretty wet, it had been a lot of rain, and um, walked across and uh, knelt down beside him and pat him on the head and eye and talked to him and thanked him and said what a great thing he'd done and, uh, and uh, of course with plenty of tears and what have you. So, uh, but we did bury him, as everybody now knows, with his tail to the rising sun and his head to the setting sun. What hits me mostly is um, the last 12 months I've got into a habit of probably five, six times a day when I'm here, I make sure I check him in the paddock because I knew that if he had a setback at all, I wouldn't wait, I wouldn't try to fix the setback. Um, you know, we'd do the right thing by him. That didn't happen, of course. So I'm now trying to get out of the habit of looking into the paddock. Uh, not into the paddock to be sad, but it's just habit. And I look in and say, oh, hang on, he ain't there. Will, will, will there another stallion ever go into this box? Well, I'm trying to run out of stallions, to be <laughs> yeah. honest. So I'm not sure that one ever will go in. Um, again, with Sir Tristram, no stallion went into the paddock for um, about uh, four years. Yeah. Um, and then I gave in. Um, so I can't answer that. I, I guess one day there certainly will be a stallion who'll go into this box. I, I yeah. mean, it won't be a stallion you've got to wait to see if he's going to be a great stallion or anything. Um, so it's certainly be nothing going here for 12 months anyway. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a Beals box and uh, it will be for the next 12 months. It's just an iconic name, isn't it, now? It's just yeah. a little name that'll go down in all the annals yeah. of New Zealand territory. Yeah. history. Yeah, well, it's something that I can't understand um, really why um, Sheikh Hamdam would have named him Sabeel yeah. and then end up with a successful racehorse and sell him because I've been to Dubai and the palace and the stables and everything are named Sabeel, yeah. you know, so uh, anyway, it, uh, it was good fortune and fortune to me that he didn't want to keep him. And I guess he didn't have Vidali or, or Stud Farm in Australia yeah. at the time. And that yeah. was one of the reasons. Exactly. But I know that I've, it's come back to me that he has always regretted that he ever <laughs> sold him. Yeah. Yeah. Like your good fortune. Well, it was.
Yes, there's no doubt that Zabir will continue to influence the pedigree pages of Australasian breeding for some time to come. Right now we're taking a short break on Dunstan Kiwi bread, but still to come we're at Valachi Downs with Jonathan Skelly and Emily Murphy catches up with Cambridge Studs yielding manager Dominic Corbin. <laughs>